The first one is rather recent. We were talking about a subject not long ago and the words were found and an individual came to me and said, hey, why don't you explain those just a little bit more? And the words very simply are anathema, maranatha. We don't talk like that, do we, in our world today? So let's talk about these words, anathema, Maranatha. It looks like two words, doesn't it? But in reality, and we'll see it further, there are really three words that are there. The words are found only one time in the King James Version. And they're found in 1 Corinthians 16, verse 22. Notice what Paul writes. If any man love not the Lord Jesus Christ, let him be anathema maranatha. Wow. The first point we need to understand is those words have not been translated. What I mean by that is this. Those individuals who are translating from Greek to English did not bring the meaning of those words into our text. And so therefore, when we read them, we do not immediately understand the meaning of the terms. Those words have been transliterated. What we mean by that is this. The English letters, equivalent to the Greek letters, have been brought over into the English language. In other words, when you speak these two words, you are almost speaking in Greek. Anathema, maranatha. If a Greek were to come into our assembly today, they would understand that those words are Greek words. So we have to go a little deeper, and we have to try to find out the meaning of the term. Like I said... There are three words that are here that we have to define. The first one is the word anathema. Strong defines the word as this, a religious ban. The excommunication of a person or a thing. Even that definition doesn't tell us a whole lot because in the churches of Christ we don't talk about religious bands, do we? And we don't talk about individuals being excommunicated. That's denominational talk, isn't it? Or at least in our minds it is. But that's the definition that Strong gives of the term. Thayer gives a much deeper definition. I want you to listen to the definition. A thing that is set up or laid up in order to be kept. Are there certain things in your home that you set up somewhere special, that you lay up somewhere special for safekeeping? Sometimes we put them on a top top shelf, don't we? We don't want any little hands getting a hold of them. Sometimes we put them kind of far back in the shelf because we certainly don't want those things falling off on the floor. Sometimes we'll take those things and put them in a safe because we don't want anybody getting a hold of them. Things that are set up, laid up. Notice how he continues though. A thing devoted to God without hope of being redeemed. Man. That kind of changes the thought about the word, doesn't it? He goes on to say, a person doomed to destruction, a man accursed, devoted to the direst of woes. Vines defines the word as this, a thing devoted to God for destruction. Anathema. The word is found six times in the Greek text. And it's translated in three different ways. Number one, it is translated curse in Acts 23 verse 14. Four times it is translated 
accursed. Romans chapter 9 verse 3, 1 Corinthians 12 verse 3, and then Galatians 1, 8 and 9. But though we are an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that ye have received, let him be anathema, the Bible says. Let him be accursed, according to the King James Version. But though we are an angel from heaven, preach any other thing unto you, let him be what? Anathema. The Bible says. And then we have the translation here in 1 Corinthians 16, 22, simply anathema. The transliteration, not the translation of the term. Now, let's go to that second or third word. Notice that it says marin, and then there's a space, atha. We'll talk about it in just a second. Strong defines the word as this, an exclamation of approaching judgment. Thayer defines the word as this, our Lord cometh or will come. Now notice what Vine says. It is the Greek spelling of two Aramaic words. Marian, which means Lord, and the second one, Atha, meaning what? Will come. Now let's put the two words together. Anathema, Maranatha. What does it mean? It means simply this. Let him be accursed at the Lord's coming. Wow. Pretty strong words, aren't they? If you ever speak to someone and you tell them, I want you to be anathema, Maranatha. You're telling them, when the Lord comes again, I want you to be accursed. Now in the context of 1 Corinthians 16, 22, Paul specifically says who these individuals are, does he not? He says, those individuals who are going to be accursed, those individuals who are going to be condemned at the Lord's coming, are those who do not love the Lord Jesus Christ. If any man love not the Lord, let him be anathema, Maranatha. Here's something we need to understand. Loving God is more than just mouthing some words, folks. I could put the entirety of the world in a line, and I could go down to this person, to the next person, to the next person, and I could ask them, Do you love the Lord? And guess what they would say? Oh, yes. We could go from house to house to house in this community. Do you love the Lord? Oh, yes. You see, almost everybody would cry out that they love the Lord. But loving the Lord runs much deeper than merely mouthing words, doesn't it? Loving the Lord involves obedience to His commands, and the Bible is plain about that, is it not? John 14, 15, If you love me, keep my commandments the Bible says. In that same chapter, John 14, verse 23, Jesus says, If any man love me, he keepeth my words. In the very next verse, verse 24, he says just the opposite. He that loveth me not, keepeth not my sayings. 1 John 5, verse 3, For this is the love of God, that we keep His commandments. It's one thing to mouth the words, I love God. It is another thing to prove that love by obedience to His commands. Those who don't love God, those who do not keep His commandments, are anathema maranatha. Wow. Strong words, aren't they? Here's what we mean. They've been devoted to the Lord. Now think about that. The Lord knows exactly who they are. And they have been committed into His trust. They've been devoted to God not to be redeemed, but to be accursed in the last day. Paul writes about these individuals. In 2 Thessalonians 1, beginning at verse 7, And to you who are troubled, rest with us. When the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with His mighty angels in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God 
and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of His power. Here Paul is describing exactly what it means to be anathema maranatha. When the Lord comes again, they will be committed to eternal condemnation. We've learned some lessons, haven't we? Lesson one, there is a Lord. There is a being who is sovereign. There is a being who is a master. There is a being who is over all. And folks, He commands us to love Him by obeying Him. Not merely mouthing some words, but proving our love. By obedience to His commands. One of these days, He's coming again. There's absolutely no doubt about that. And when He comes, those who do not love Him will be accursed. They will be what? They will be condemned to the direst of woes. They will be anathema. Maranatha. 